I found a lump in my breast. Am I going to die? That's what I asked him. I was so scared. Like, I, I genuinely was so scared. Let's go back to a few months ago. Tell us what happened. I found a lump in my breast. I checked them quite regularly, I would say, but something just felt a little bit different after basically various tests got diagnosed with breast cancer at the start of October. It completely caught me totally off guard, especially the way this year's been in 2020. I was, I was going to appointments by myself, and so to be told that in a room with no one there, that it was, yeah, it was tough. When you're young, you're fit, you're healthy, it's not something that you ever think could be something that you have to deal with yourself. I live a really healthy lifestyle. I don't drink, never do drugs. Um, yeah, professional sports person and still something like that can happen. Um, but I think that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to talk about it. I, I needed to sort of normalise the conversation and say the words like tumour and cancer and, and, and speak to people because it was so alien to me. I never thought anything like this would happen. But then as soon as you start to realise how, how actually quite common it is and that these kind of things need to be shared. When you hear the word cancer and, and it's someone talking to you, telling you that it's happening to you, can you remember sort of what your thought process was when, when you heard that? To be honest, it kind of does seem like a massive blur. I think every, every other appointment after that, I was grateful because they allowed my club doctor to be in there with me to kind of ask all the, the medical questions because I, I, I didn't have a clue. You automatically think the worst. The, you know, you asked, I asked the question, am I going to die? That's what I asked him. Your family living in Glasgow, they couldn't come and see you at the time, I don't think, could they, yeah. because of all the restrictions. How do you deal with something like that? On your, on your own at that time. This is probably where I'll get upset, because... <sighs> the girls here were just... unbelievable. Like, I can't even... I feel like there's moments like these, or times like these, where you realise why you sort of play sport, and it really is like being part of a family, away from family. I don't know what I would have done without them. And that's the staff and players, like they've all been unbelievable. Like the support I've had down here has just been, it's got me through it for sure. What has it been like in terms of the processes you've had to go through where and where you are right now? With a sports injury, you get, you get scanned and it's very much so clear what your rehab process will be and then you'll be back on the pitch in X amount of weeks or months. With cancer, it's, it felt like to me there were so many different tests that I needed to do to kind of really figure out what was happening. I think I got diagnosed on a Thursday night. I played that weekend against Brighton. The girls found out on the Saturday, so to then play on the Sunday, and I, I scored as well, and that is one of the... <sighs> like, to score after having been through that. <coughs> I genuinely think that the celebration of that goal sums up the whole experience and how the girls reacted to this whole thing. When you get the news to say that nothing had spread to the lymph nodes and that was, that was huge. I think that for me was probably, I, I, I would say, a turning point for me emotionally. I felt from that point I was okay. Like I, I knew I could do this and could get through it and that was the best possible outcome. Um, and the last bit was, was chemo. It would definitely take me out of the game for a little bit, so that was quite hard, but they basically sent my type of cancer away for testing to let me know whether I needed it or not, and thankfully I didn't, so that was another amazing bit of news to have, and I could crack on with radiotherapy and get back to playing football. And you obviously were so keen to get back to playing. Has it changed in any way the way you, you view what you do? Oh. and? Like, absolutely. Like, I will never, ever take, a, a, like, a, a niggle or a physical injury for, for, like, that is nothing compared to going through a form of cancer. Um, I think especially going away with Scotland, the first game against Portugal, I just remember thinking, you know, this might not have happened. It could have gone the other way. And I actually got that shirt signed because that, that cap 
means more to me now than any other cap I've previously been given just because that's the that's the cap that I you know played with after beating cancer you got checked early yeah and it's been horrendous but you're sitting here and you're smiling and you're mm. excited about what's to come yeah. in your life. Is that the message? Yeah, it's been a crazy year with people that are maybe scared to go to the hospital and scared to get checked out because of COVID, knowing that people are sitting at home and maybe can feel things but are too scared to go in. I just think I want to spread the message that just go and get checked. It might be absolutely nothing, but if it is, if you can find things early, it can be okay. How do things look? in terms of anything you have left, in terms of treatment-wise? I'm hoping that I can still train and play throughout radiotherapy. They've kind of advised that with, it, with doing exercise might actually help the fatigue, so hopefully I'll be absolutely fine. To be able to be home with, Chris, uh, with family over Christmas, knowing that you know the worst is definitely over, would just be the best end to a pretty terrible year.